Okay, so I just want to do a real short video going over some of the more basic procedure styles that we're going to look at throughout the course. Now, while we can understand the differences between what the AD and M registers are for, how we use a memory stack, all the different instructions and whatnot, it's not entirely too useful until you're able to comprehensively put everything together with some actual expectation of making a procedure in assembly. So having some goal and accomplishing it via writing just raw assembly. It's very similar to having some potential problem that you want to solve by writing a high level language like Python, C++, something like that. You understand how the language works, you write some code to achieve that problem, solve it however you want to look at it, and you're off to the races. Well, we can do the exact same thing with assembly, but it may not always be exactly straightforward on how to do that. So that's what this video is going to be on, so let's go and take a look. Alright, so it does say some of the procedures. We don't really have functions or programs or anything to that nature with assembly. It's usually regarded as procedures because it's some procedural aspect. And that's just kind of the nature behind that. Now, real quick, like I said, we can do pretty much everything we can do in a high level language with assembly. It's just that assembly is going to be very, very low level paradigm by default. And that is where the idea of assembly not being straightforward comes. Because everything we do in high level is generally pretty straightforward. If I want to do, you know, x equals 5 to the n power, I have some parameter of n, I may be doing 5 cubed, and all of a sudden I get 125. So x equals 125. This is straightforward. This is pretty simple. It's just basic math. That's not the case with assembly. It's not going to be straightforward. And generally, the most difficult part of assembly is just raw math because there's no high level arithmetic for you to work with. There's no power functions or square roots, nothing like that. Everything has to be done by hand at low level math. That's probably the most difficult aspect for assembly, in my opinion. There are some more convoluted aspects like creating loops, ideas of recursion, things like that. Those can be pretty difficult to wrap your head around. But regardless, it all boils down to the fact that this is very low level. There's no high level abstraction to benefit from like you would in C++ or Python or any other language to that degree. So the main part for assembly is understanding how to manipulate your data to achieve whatever problem you're trying to solve. So, right here, we have a basic setup. We have some pseudocode here. We have the actual procedural assembly that we're looking at here. And then I actually have, this is gonna be what the procedural assembly is translated to. This is memory in terms of ROM, not RAM. So, for the pseudocode, we have some comments. If R0 is greater than or equal to zero, then R1 equals one. Else, R1 equals negative one. So the pseudocode reads as, if R0 is greater than or equal to zero, go to positive. R1 equals negative one, go to end. Also, this is what POS stands for here. Positive R1 equals one, and then end. So you can tell that we have two labels here. We have some comparison assignment and an actual jump command along with another assignment here so the way we're going to work with this is line by line every single one of these is going to translate to something in procedural assembly some might be more complex than others and then translate that to what it will be in rom as well so you can see how the procedural assembly is done and then what directly is actually located in rom specifically the first thing if R0 is greater than or equal to zero, go to positive. So, you can get that. This would be the block of code needed for this line. We have at R0, because we need to get the value of R0, so we end up with at R0 equals M. So I'm gonna write 
Um, I think I'll write over here for A, D, and M. We can keep track of those three registers. And then we know that when we do at R0, we're doing at zero, so it gives us zero here. We all know it's in the data register, we don't know it's in the memory register right now. Not a big deal. Then we do D equals, you know, we actually, you know what? Before I do that, I'm gonna write zero and one in memory stack, and I'm gonna do five. I'm gonna say five is currently located in memory position zero in our RAM. So whenever we do at R zero, M should equal to five. Now we do T equals M, get that value. We have that stored. We have at positive. We don't know what positive is right now, so that's why it's blank here. Eventually we'll figure it out when we put the label down. But then we do D J G E. This is a comparison part over here. And we're comparing on greater than or equal to. And then we're going to EOS. So this is a jump command to go to positive. If our value is greater than or equal to zero, the value being whatever is located in memory register R0. So we don't know what positive is because we don't know what label it is. We already have R0 stored in the D register, and we're checking if it's greater than or equal to zero. If so, we jump. And this is exactly what it translates to in ROM. Moving on, we have R1 equals negative one. Again, A, D, and M, zero and one. And we were still at zero, five, five previously. Don't know it's in register one. I know that five is in register zero, not a big deal. Okay, so R1 equals negative one. Well, that's very, very simple. It's just assignment. So we do at R1 to get to that location, and we set equal to negative one. This is if we do not jump, I think. Right, so we did jump, we've gone to where POS is. This is if we don't. So that's what we'll do. We will assume that we're not jumping, and we will do R1. Is that equal to negative one, this is one here. At first we didn't know what this was, but then we did m equals negative one, and m equals negative one, and then register one is now negative one. So we'll do equal signs here, so I don't get confused with negatives. Like so. Okay. So, once we do that, we are going to do you go to end aspect, which is very similar to the go to positive part of this first line, except for instead of positive, we're just gonna go to end. Again, we do not know what this is, so it's left blank and ROM for right now. And then we have zero and JMP. This is an unconditional jump. It's going to jump no matter what. And that's pretty much gonna be it for this one. Then we get to this point, you see we have POS. This is a label. Now notice real quick, nothing got added, an eight, because this is not a hack assembly instruction. It is a point in ROM that we are associating with. Specifically, it would be eight. This would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and then it would be eight at the next line. That is how this label works. So it translates to the line at which we would jump to for positive. Now we know this location is me eight. We have our label set up. So every time we jump to, we're gonna to jump to positive. This translates to at eight, not a big deal. Now, next we have R1 equals one, almost identical to our previous R1 equals negative one, except for we're doing positive one. That's it, so we just at one, m equals one. And then we finally have int, which again is not an actual instruction, it is a label, and you can see that we had eight here, so nine and then 10 would be next, so this translates to at 10. 
the location in ROM where that label would reside, or at least where it's indicating. Now we're almost done, and technically for the actual pseudocode, we are done. But there is one more very important part that you generally want to add at the end of almost any procedure in the hack language, and that is going to be the idea of this right here. We have a label of end, so we're going to utilize that and say at end, zero jump. So what this will translate to is at 10, because again, we're just using end like we did up here, and then an unconditional jump. So what this is, is we implement an infinite loop after our procedure to ensure that we do not continue executing any instructions that might be left over memory. And that's what you see here. It's just random data left over in ROM because we can't assure that ROM is empty because if somebody came in and loaded in a really, really large procedure and then you immediately load in your procedure, well, you didn't overwrite everything. It's not going to overwrite everything in ROM. It's just going to write in what you have. And if what they had was a larger procedure, well, their instructions are still left over. So this could be a point of failure or much, much worse. It could end up executing instructions that you really, really don't want executed because it's something you planned on. So what we do is we have the idea of an infinite loop. So it'll never execute anything beyond what you write. So it is a safety precaution to do this. And generally it's not too bad. It just ensures that you're not going to run anything that you didn't intend to run. Okay, so moving on, we have an iterative procedure. This is gonna be a little bit more advanced and has a little bit more complexity and functionality to it. So this is gonna have a program or a procedure, I would even call it sum one to n. So R0 represents n, computes R1 equals one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six, so on and so forth, until you get to whatever R0 was. So if we did say like nine, we'd have one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight plus nine. And essentially we're doing a summation here. That's about it. This, this type of thing, zero to nine. I may have wrote it backwards. I forget. Anyway, I disregard that. Usage, put a value, greater than or equal to one, and R0. So again, this line by line, we're not gonna translate the actual ROM. We've already done that, so we're just gonna look at this line by line. Starting with I equals one. Very simple, at one, at I, at one. At I, M equals one. Now recall though, I is a user defined variable. So it translates to something like at 16, where I will exist. So it is a user defined variable. So we know it's always gonna to translate to at 16. Not a big deal. Then we do sum equals zero. This would be at 17 for the next user defined variable. And we set that equal to zero. We're just predefining what these variables should be set with before we start our loop. Again, just instantiating variables, just like you would in Python or C++. Moving on, we're gonna have a label of loop, and then we'll have if i is greater than z r0, go to stop. Now this is gonna be a fairly complex procedure here, or at least part of the procedure. So first, we want to get i. So we do at i, D equals M. We're getting the value in I and storing that in D register. Then we're getting at R0 and doing D equals D minus M. So the reason we do this is because when we do comparisons in the hack assembly, we're always comparing at zero. So what this is doing is instead of doing I is greater than R0, we're doing i minus r0 is greater than zero because we're just subtracting r0 from both sides zeroing out the right side which leads us to the valid zero comparison and then this is still the same logic as what we see right here and then finally we just do jump to stop if d is greater than zero so then we need to do sum equals sum plus i. They have one way of accomplishing this, where we have 
at sum d equals m at i d equals d plus m where we add these two together and store that in sum there's a bit of a different way that you might want to do this and that is to do i first and then do d equals m and then maybe you want to do at sum m equals m plus d so these are achieve the same goal of adding sum and i together and storing that in sum it's just with the what's given here you can see that we take four instructions so four cycles essentially in this case well it's actually a little bit more than four cycles but four individual instructions just to add the values together and we take a two additional ones to store it whereas over here we have four that are used to add and store it because we never have to move away from sum here because we get the data from it using m, add it to d which was stored from i, and store the added result back into m which is still sum. So this is more of an optimal way of doing this, but neither one of these methods is wrong. All right, so then we just need to increment i which is just an in-place memory increment. We do at i, m equals m plus one. Not a big deal. Go to loop is going to be an unconditional jump to loop. And then finally, we need to do a label of stop and then r1 equals sum. So we get the value of sum at sum d equals m and then store that r1 with r1 m equals d. And then we do our infinite loop just to ensure that we don't execute anything beyond what we want. And we just instantiate a new loop here just so it always just cycles right here at the end. And that's pretty much it for the more advanced procedures. There are far more complex procedures that we could look at. This is just trying to set up kind of a baseline for having some general problem and trying to implement that using nothing but actual assembly. So it's more of an idea that you want to essentially rationalize the problem, write it down in pseudocode and try and go line by line with what you've written. If you don't want to use pseudocode, you can actually write it in Python, or I guess you can do it in something like C, something very, very low level without trying to add a lot of abstraction from like libraries or anything. But the whole goal is to try to understand the problem at a high level and then see how do I implement this using my low level paradigm assembly. That's the general goal here. So that's all I've got for this video. Hope everything made sense. And I'll see you in the next one.